Hi, and welcome to Volcano Awareness Month with the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory. My name is Carolyn Parchetta, and I'll be giving the first presentation of the month on behalf of the entire geology staff at HBO. Today, we're going to talk about the two eruptions we had in 2021, which follows a two and a quarter year quiescence at the volcano of no eruptive activity. So let's jump right in. This is going to be a 10 minute style talk. This is not a 45 minute in detailed science talk, but more just going to highlight the geology changes that have happened over the past year. If you want to hear about the seismic gas or deformation parts of the eruptive history of the past year, please come back every Tuesday this month and those parts of the story will uh, have their own video to share. There's some excellent information there, so please do come back every week. So what we'd like to talk about or start with is 2020. We had a lava or we had a water lake, and the big question on our mind was what's going to happen when magma returns and lava reaches the surface? Because these lava and water are known to interact very violently and cause major explosions. And as you can see in the video, we ended up not having a major explosion, and there's a lot of steam when the lava first starts erupting. So why is that? Uh, it was certainly a concern of ours that, you know, this was a potential outcome when lava reached the surface again. But what happened is that the, if you look in the infrared image on the left, uh, this is one of the first images of the first fissure opening and lava is already pouring down around the old Halemaumau floor and into the water lake. And that ended up boiling off the water lake within 60 to 90 minutes. Uh, during that time, this fissure propagated across the old floor that is down dropped, and then there was a vent on the north side that also opened up. And this block, this old floor of the crater, became covered within the first day of the eruption. Now, even though we didn't see violent explosions that were very large, we did see a few minor steam and ash bursts from the eastern end of the lava lake over here. After it had replaced the water lake, um, there was still some gas that could come through and rip crust off the lava lake and produce small amounts of ash. Uh, we did see one of these plumes go over the road, but it didn't have any extra material that wasn't already being produced by the fountains when we checked uh, the road for the deposit. Now, this video shows the north fissure uh, after the lava lake has significantly filled up and the, the Halemaumau floor block is gone. And we're going to see something really interesting in this video. As the lava lake continues to rise, it's going to shut down the north vent and drown the fountain out. And the western vent, which is higher in elevation, becomes more active and becomes the dominant vent for the rest of the eruption. Now, in this video, you're also going to see that lava had started to go back into the north vent, and, and you can tell by the convection pattern. Now that daylight is breaking on this video, you can see that the material coming in from the west is actually pushing material up on the west on the eastern side and causing a reverse convection. So as this video loops a second time, I'll point that out again, and you can see that. Uh, What's also interesting is that this island raft, as it approaches uh, the northern vent, uh, that's also around the time that vent shut down. And once the vent shuts down, it stops approaching the northern wall and it backs off and goes back into the center of the lake, which is really interesting. These floating islands are, are not unique to this eruption. Um, Dr. Jagger saw them when he first started HBO in the lava lakes that he used to watch. So here again, you can see a lava flowing into the north vent briefly, uh, draining back down. And then now you can see there's kind of a line here where material is coming from the eastern wall towards the center of the crater and also from the western wall from the vent. And so we have kind of a upwelling convection on the east side. This is what's called a passive lava lake where material flows in from the outside and then uh, it has nowhere to go. So the, the material as it's molten and remains fluid can, can convect around, and, and that's what all these different plate patterns are showing us. Now we have a few still image panels of showing that island raft moving, because it's kind of hard to see in the video. Uh, this is the initial raft from the first day of the eruption, and as the, as the next couple days progress, it moves significantly north in the lake towards that north vent. When the vent shut down on the 26th, it did back off, uh, back into the center of the lake, and as the west vent started feeding more material, uh, we think that material helped push the raft towards the west vent over here. In early January, it did actually get really close to the crater wall and then it backed off and this ultimately did a 90 degree turn. So this area of two peaks on the north side of the raft in this December 30th image ended up facing the west vent by the middle of January. This is the total deposit eruption map for the December 20th eruption. It lasted until May 26th and was a total depth of 226 meters or 740 feet. The deepest part of the lake is right here in the center in this brown color on the west side. 
The total area here outlined in blue is 45,000 square meters, which is 111 acres. And if we were to cut uh, this, this map in half, we would have a cross section from west to east where uh, this dashed line is the old pre-2018 Halemaumau crater floor and caldera floor. Uh, the white line is the down dropped block area and uh, this lower section is the old Halemaumau crater or what was left of it. And then in here we've drawn this orange line to show how much of the crater got filled by this December 20th to May 26th eruption. It's a total of 40 million cubic meters, which is about 10 and a half billion gallons of lava. Uh, the peak effusion rate was 110 cubic meters per second, which is 29,000 gallons per second. And that's what these two plots here on the bottom are showing us as the total volume and then the eruption rate dying off. Most of the higher eruption rates we saw in the first three weeks and by day 20, it had tapered off to a more consistent three to five cubic meters per second every day for, uh, for several months. So this plot only shows the first two months of the eruption. We had a few months of quiescence, and then again on December 9th, uh, we had, or excuse me, December 29th, we had another fissure open up in Halemaumau Crater. It started off with this uh, north-south oriented fissure right in the middle of the lake, right on the east side of that main raft that is now rotated 90 degrees. And we ended up getting another fissure on this west side very shortly after this video ends. Those it was uh, it was above the western vent of the previous eruption, but basically in the same area. Uh, as you watch this video, you can see the lava overtops the old lake surface, and some of these islands that were previously formed get buried. What was interesting is that through October, those rose up, and so uh, there's a buoyancy issue going on here that was very interesting to document. We're still trying to understand more about it. Another interesting thing that we observed in October and November, and even now in December, is the, uh, the surface of the lava lake has a slant to it, which is uh, a little interesting. <laughs> so fluids usually make a very flat surface, and, and this is fluid rock. But if you are standing here at the observer, this is, this is an image we would typically show at our staff meeting, showing all the measurements we make. Uh, a lot of our updates come out giving an average number or a single number, but uh, in this particular image, it really highlights how much the lake is slanted, the lake surface is slanted. From the observer's view, they measured the lava being 327 meters below them uh, on the eastern end of the lake. But in the center of the lake, it was seven meters closer to them, so higher in elevation. And then at near the vent, it was 313 meters, so another seven meters higher. So there's a 14 meter, which is roughly 50 feet, uh, 49 feet of difference, elevation difference, between the west end of the lake and the east end of the lake. And this is over, that distance is about seven tenths of a mile or 1.1 kilometers. And that's that's a pretty big elevation gap. <laughs> so th this is what we call dynamic ponding, where the, the material and the viscosity and the uh, yield strength of the of the lava basically pools up here it's very much how similar to how if you pour syrup on a plate or your pancakes it makes a blob first and it has to spread out and so at the end of the first eruption we did see the lava lake kind of correct itself and the east end rose up and the the west end sunk down a little bit because all of this is fluid under that solid crust that we see and that will probably happen again whenever this eruption ends but at the moment, there, there's anywhere from an 8 to 10 to 14 meter difference in the east and west elevations. We're going to zoom into uh, the far right part of that former photo. And this is uh, another downdrop block that recently had some overflows start to flow onto it on November 15th. Uh, and that, again, the, the western vent area here on this left image is about, in this photo, about 10 meters higher than where the overflows are happening. So there, there's a bit of a, a hydraulic or magnostatic head, if you will, that, that will help ooze this lava out as the crust continues to rise above the level of this block. Um, it'll be a while before this one gets buried. This is a very large block and is also uh, inclined. So it won't be as easy to bury as the one that got buried the first night of the first eruption. So in summary, the, the current eruption, which is still ongoing, has already erupted almost the same amount of volume, 38 million cubic meters as opposed to 40. So it's another 10 and a half billion gallons of lava into Halemaumau Crater. It's added an additional 60 meters of depth, which is just under 200 feet. 
and the surface area has expanded by 52 acres. The peak of fusion was 129 cubic meters per second, and that equates to 34,000 gallons per second on the first day of the eruption. That has also tapered off to an average of one to five cubic meters per second for most of the eruption. So here's that plot. Uh, this is showing the, the fusion rate dropping. Uh, in both cases, it dropped within the first 20 days and main, maintained a low steady state. And uh, the, the orange line here is a 2020 eruption. The red line is the 2021 eruption from September showing the volume accumulation. Again, this is only showing the first two months of the eruption. The, uh, the 2021 obviously goes on for longer. Uh, in the map here, you can see the outline in red of the current eruption and the current lake surface. And in blue, uh, you can see the, the May or end of June, or excuse me, end of May, early June outline of the first eruptions lava lake surface. And so the difference between these two lines is that 56 meters that was added excuse me, 56 hectares, 56 acres that was added to the surface area. So sometimes these numbers are hard to comprehend and my colleagues at the USGS did a fantastic job making a visual that helps you understand what all these numbers mean. And so they compared the Empire State Building to our lava lake here, right here at Kilauea Summit in Halima'uma'u Crater. Uh, if you were to place the Empire State Building at the bottom of the crater. You can see here where the water lake would have risen to on that building. This next orange plane between it and the top one is where the, the first lava lake ended in terms of the first 40 million cubic meters. And now we, we have another lava lake surface here that is actually a little outdated. This is from October 5th, but uh, it shows just how much more volume has already been added with this eruption. Uh, it's actually, the overflows are right here. So this is actually you know, several meters higher than what this picture depicts. But this is an excellent graphic to help comprehend the, the sheer volume of lava that has been erupted this year. Now, the current activity, if you'd like to see it, you probably can, but it's in kind of this on again, off again, uh, quasi steady state. So previously it was steady state, but low level, but constant. Now it, we've noticed that with the tilt and the deflation inflation events, it seems to turn off and come back on. And this lasts a day or two. And uh, this line is kind of arbitrarily drawn across the DI events, but essentially at the bottom of the DI event, the lava seems to go away for a day or two and then inflation will start and then we'll see lava come back um, at, as the in inflation recovers and the pressure recovers. It doesn't happen on some of these smaller ones, but it has happened on these three bigger ones that the red line crosses. And as I was making this PowerPoint presentation to share with you guys today, uh, the you can see we had started a deflation and by the time I ended up recording <laughs> this presentation, the lava was already gone. So it'll probably be gone for a day or two. And then if uh, inflation starts again, it should come back in a day or two. And we've we're expecting to see this pattern for um, for a little bit, but you know one of these could be the last time we see lava until the next eruption. So just stay tuned, and if if inflation comes back, then uh, the lava should come back as well for now. All right, with that, I will say thank you very much. It's been a pleasure to share uh, the first Tuesday of Volcano Awareness Month with you all. And if you have questions, please email us at askhbo at usgs.gov. Um, please come back for other future talks by the other disciplines because they will be covering these same events, but from their perspective of seismicity, gas, and deformation. All right. Have a great one, everyone.